Welcome to this restorative yoga practice for fatigue. For those of you new here, I'm Rachel Marie White. I'll be your instructor today. You will need some props for this practice, so make sure you have those on hand. We'll start this practice in a standing pose. Prasarita Padottanasana, standing wide legged forward bend. If standing is not comfortable for you, hang tight. I'm going to show you a modification in just a moment. Because this is a restorative practice, I'm showing this pose with a chair. I'm going to bring the forearms down onto the seat of the chair and let the forehead rest on top of the forearms. The feet are slightly wider than hip distance apart. I'm actively pressing into all four corners of the feet. There's a slight bend in the knees. And tilting the pelvis slightly forward is going to add a little extra length in the back of the legs and length in the spine. We're going to hold this pose for a few minutes, so make sure that you're comfortable. If you need to modify this pose, you can use an extra chair and sit down, take the knees wide, and then place the forearms on the chair in front of you, resting the forehead on top of the forearms. This way you don't have to worry about balance and the head is level with the heart. Wherever you are, make sure you're comfortable Make any final adjustments to your props. And just begin to tune into your breath. Feeling the breath as it travels in and out of the lungs. Nourishing your body with life, with prana. In restorative practices, we hold poses for prolonged periods of time, but that doesn't mean that you have to be a frozen statue in each of these poses. So if at any point in the practice you feel like you need to wiggle around and readjust, that is totally fine. You want to be as comfortable as possible so that your body and your mind can completely relax. To come out of this pose, put a generous bend in the knees, lift your head, and slowly press yourself up to standing.
do this slowly, bringing the feet together, pausing for a moment, giving yourself time to adjust to being upright. And then moving your chair out of the way, we're going to transition down onto the floor. We're going to come into a supported bridge pose. So lie down on your back. Keep the knees bent with the feet flat on the floor. And then lift the hips up off the mat. And here I'm using a block underneath my pelvis but you could also use a bolster or a stack of pillows. Feel free to play with the height of your support, finding whatever feels most comfortable for you. Being mindful of your lower back. And then once you find the support that feels right to you, allow all of your muscles to relax. Allow the support to hold you.
out of this pose, remove your props and lower your hips to the floor. Maybe sway the knees back and forth a few times just to unwind any tension. And then roll yourself over to the side and press yourself up to sit. For our next pose, we'll take supported balasana child's pose. I'm going to be using a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a few pillows stacked on top of one another and just bring it right between the knees. I'm also going to be using a pillow underneath the sit bones and that's going to lessen the intensity of the stretch on the hips. You can also place a folded blanket or a cushion underneath your knees if you're sensitive there. And feel free to adjust the height of the bolster or pillows. And then once you're ready, go ahead and walk the hands out in front of you. Turn the head to the side. If this still isn't feeling quite comfortable for you, you can come into a different variation with the legs extended behind you. So you're actually lying directly on top of the bolster or pillows and then allowing the forehead to rest on a block or a pillow. And this is great if you have any tension in your neck any tension in your hips, or if you have sensitive knees. You still get all the same benefits of child's pose in this pose. So releasing the lower back, massaging the digestive organs, soothing anxiety, alleviating headaches, Making any final adjustments, making sure that you're comfortable. Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Again, inhale, feel the back body expanding with breath then exhale through the mouth. One more time like that. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. And tuning into your natural flow of breath in and out through your nose. If you're in the first variation of child's pose, go ahead and turn your head to the opposite side so that your neck doesn't become stiff. And then just allow your whole body to completely melt into the support of the bolster.
Begin to lift your head and walk yourself up to sit. Put your props off to the side and swing your legs out in front of you. Maybe bounce the knees a couple times just to shake out any stiffness. And then slowly lower yourself down onto your back. We'll come into a supine twist. So scoot your hips over to the left and drop the knees over to the right. Open up the chest, gazing over the left shoulder. If you'd like, you can place a pillow between the knees to make this more comfortable. And then just breathing into the left side of the body.
twists can be incredibly energizing because they stimulate Manipura chakra, which is your solar plexus chakra at your navel. This chakra is the body's own infinite source of energy. When we are able to tap into that source, we are able to access a self-sustaining, renewable energy. Take one more deep inhale and then exhale, bring the knees back up to center and we'll take our twist on the opposite side. So go ahead and scoot the hips slightly over to the right and then drop the knees over to the left. Take the right arm out toward the side gazing over the right shoulder. Feeling the right side of the body expand and relax with the breath. One more deep inhale and exhale coming back to center with the knees bent and then rolling yourself over to the side slowly come back up to sit we're going to set up our props for supta baddha konasana reclining bound angle pose I'll be using a bolster, a block, and a couple of pillows for this pose. If you don't have a bolster or a block, you can just use a stack of pillows, that's totally fine. I like to use the block under the bolster to kind of lessen the incline so that when I lie back, it's a little more comfortable. And then just placing two pillows, one under each knee so that the Hip stretch isn't too intense. And then just slowly lean back. Let the arms rest alongside the body with the palms facing up.
Tucking the tailbone under might make this pose feel a little more comfortable for you. Feel free to make any adjustments. Wiggle around a little bit. Find what feels most comfortable for you. We're going to rest here for quite a while. Once you're settled in, give your body permission to completely relax and let go. Surrendering to the support of the props. Allowing yourself to be held. If your mind has begun to wander, guide it back to the present moment. 
bringing your awareness back to your breath. Taking full, deep belly breaths. Allowing the breath to nourish your entire body. Bringing life to each and every one of your cells. To come out of this pose, bring the knees together. If you'd like, you can extend the legs out in front of you and stay here for final relaxation. If this doesn't feel quite comfortable, you can lie back in Shavasana instead with a bolster or pillows under your knees and a pillow under your head. Feet are hip distance apart, and relaxed, and the arms are alongside the body with the palms facing up. If lying flat doesn't feel comfortable, you can also come down onto your side.
placing a pillow under your head and a pillow between your knees to keep the spine in alignment. Make any final adjustments, wiggle around, allow yourself to settle in. The whole body becoming still and relaxed. The only movement is the ebb and flow of breath in and out of the body. There's nothing for you to do here but breathe. To guide you into deeper relaxation, I will now take you through a scan of the body, starting at the crown of the head. And as I say the name of each body part, I want you to mentally go to that body part and experience it without judgment. Bring your awareness to the crown of your head, your forehead, right eye, left eye, jaw, throat, chest, right arm, left arm abdomen pelvis right leg left leg soles of the feet palms of the hands the entire right side of the body. The entire left side of the body. Upper body. Lower body. Front side of the body. the back body, the entire body as a whole. Feeling the entire body sinking into stillness. The only movement is the ebb and flow of breath in and out of the body. As you continue to relax, observe the sensation of fatigue in your body. as if it were a force outside of yourself. The fatigue may be a part of you, but it is not you.
observing this sensation of fatigue. Is it heavy or light? Is it cold or hot? Does it have a texture? Does it have a color? Observing the sensation of fatigue without judgment. Observing the sensation of fatigue with a sort of detachment and mild curiosity. Now bringing your awareness to your breath. Visualize your breath as a healing white light. And as you breathe, this white light dissolves the darkness of your fatigue. Taking deep belly breaths, maximizing your prana, the deeper the breath, the more prana, the more energy we receive. And this allows us to release fatigue. Taking a few more cycles of deep breath. You may lie here as long as you'd like. And when you are ready, roll yourself over to the side and come up to sit.